how to mix your music, a simple guide for recording artists. So if you're a recording artist and you've been trying to mix your own music, but you just can't seem to get your songs to sound the quality you want, then this video is going to be for you. What we're going to do is we're going to start um, with a bit of some whiteboard teaching, and then that way we can really lay down the framework of what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you how these principles and strategies can work no matter what DAW you're working in. So instead of us going diving deep into Logic Pro or whatever it is and, and doing the mixing, I'm going to actually just explain principles and strategies for you in this video because I don't want to dive too deep and get too technical and confuse you and have a bunch of techno babble. What I want to do is explain strategies and basically open up your mind to a way of mixing beyond just, oh, I want to make my vocal sound a little bit better, right? We're going to actually go full on and understand the full process of mixing. So the way we're going to do things first is I'm just going to go ahead and hop into the whiteboard and I'm just going to draw some stuff out. I'm going to let you know ahead of time, uh, forgive my bad handwriting. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. So the first thing that we want to do is we really want to understand what is our goal with mixing. Now, our main goal actually is really what we're looking for is we want to optimize for this, which is called L. UFS, my handwriting, like I said, it's going to be really bad. Um, LUFS, which basically is loudness units, full scale. It's true loudness. So we're not just going to be looking. There's a difference between LUFS and the actual output gain. Told you my handwriting is going to be bad. These are two different things, okay? They do not equal each other. LUFS does not equal output gain, right? So those are two different things. And what we really want is we want our LUFS to come out to negative nine or around negative 10. That's what we want to be doing. This one lesson, this one lesson right here is already going to make a huge difference in your mixing because a lot of times what I used to see on YouTube is a lot of people say, Hey, what I've seen a lot of is this on YouTube. What a lot of people say is you want your output to equal negative five DB to leave headroom. But I have actually found that that doesn't work because what ends up happening is your song really doesn't come out sounding loud enough even after you master it. So this is the first thing we want to do is we want our LUFS to be negative 9 or negative 10. The next part of it really is what I call... I'm actually going to just go ahead and start using... Yeah, that's going to that's gonna look a lot better than my chicken scratch uh, handwriting. Let me just erase that. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do, the, the way I do it and the way I teach it is called top-down mixing, essentially. Right? And so what that means, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can really see it. So what that means is this, right? What that means is when we do top-down mixing, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically doing it track by track. Each individual track, one step at a time. And the order of how you actually mix your track does matter. So what you're going to want to do is top down mixing is really all about relationships. What does that mean? There's a bunch, did I spell relationships wrong? Relationships. Ah, there we go. That's better. What does that all mean? When it comes down to mixing, there are tons of different relationships. I'll give you an example. What I can do, I actually wasn't expecting to do this, but what I'll do is I'll pull up a track that I was just working on. I'm not going to go too crazy with all of this, but I want to show you an example. The way I personally mix is I'll start with the kick first. Let me put a loop on it. So I'll start with the kick first. Then what I'll do is I'll then and I'll get the kick sounding really good and I'll explain to you how I get it sounding good. Then I come and bring in the bass. 
Because this is a relationship. That kick base. Then I'll bring in the snare. And I want to get all this little relationship right. Because if you really think about it, I'll show you an example here. Let's, let's, let's I'll draw it out. You've got the kick. You've got uh, the bass. And you've got, you know, s snare, for example. There's the kick bass relationship, right? There's the kick snare relationship. There's the bass snare relationship. And then there's the kick bass snare relationship, right? There's all these different relationships just with these three tracks, for example. Right? Does that make sense? It's kind of like a love triangle. And then what if we had instead of that, we had vocals. That's a relationship as well. And so mixing really does come down to all of these different relationships with mixing. And so you want to get each individual thing down at a time. So what I tend to do what I tend to do is I kind of do things in this order. So I go kick first, then bass. In fact, let's type these out. This is going to get too hard. And we're going to do it like this. Boom. And we're going to make these way smaller. So for me, and actually let's do numbers. Kick, bass, snare hi-hat, open hat, other percussions. Then I'm going to go melody instruments. Then I'm going to go lead vocal, then background vocal. So this is kind of the order of how I'll go about mixing. And the one, the, the, the commonality, the commonality that we'll have with everything is pretty much with pretty much all of these, we're pretty much just going to do two main things. We're going to EQ and we're going to compress. So I'm literally just going to go down, like I'll, I'll go to the kick. You can see that I have a couple extra things on my kick, but essentially as an example, so I started off my kick and actually the actually one other thing I missed was volume, right? So it's volume, kick, uh, EQ, compression, and then step four, which is really optional is just special effects. You don't have to do this though. It's optional. So I've got my kick. I had the volume right. Here's how it sounds. I EQ it. And then I'll compress it. I threw some special effects just to make it come out even more. Makes sense. Then I'll go down to the bass. I keep my kick solo, get the volume somewhat balanced with the bass and the kick. I EQ the bass, compress, special effects, then snare, EQ compression, hi-hat, EQ compression, open hat, EQ compression. This is a, um, that's like a crash. EQ compression. And I've got everything sounding good, right? And then I'll just basically go down the line with my synth, EQ compress, violin, other violin, vocal chop. There's another vocal chop. And I just have everything like that 
going in this order of volume, EQ, compression, and any other special instruments. Simple as that. Boom. Got it? Make total sense? Cool. After that, we're going to go into vocals. So I'm going to kind of break down how I go about vocal mixing. Vocal mixing. Sorry, I'm tripping now. So first off, there, there there's really two stages to vocal mixing, okay? So stage one, oops, stage one, stage one is basically pre-mixing your vocals. So the pre-mixing actually happens, let me actually see if I can... Yes. So this happens, let me, there we go, happens during recording. And what you're basically doing is you're putting plugins on your vocals while recording. Sorry, I don't want it to stretch off screen. Um, and basically what you're accomplishing here is when you're finished mixing, or I'm sorry, when you're finished recording, finished recording your vocals are already sounding clean so that's stage one stage two is you know the actual vocal mixing vocal mixing and essentially here's the first step and i actually have a document to help me with this but i'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste oh nice that actually ended up being better than I thought. Cool. So it goes a couple of steps. First is bus. And what does busing mean? Busing just simply means you're routing your vocal to an auxiliary track so that you can have all your plugins there. That's the main part. And I'm going to show you what I did here. So here's my lead vocal. I'll zoom in on it. Right? Here's my lead vocal completely with no effects, okay? First thing I did was a little bit of tuning. Cool, got that. In terms of the auxiliary track, you can see on here that there's really no other effects. But what I did was, if you see this thing where it says BUS4, when I click that, all these other effects pop up. So when I click turning it on, it's going to boost up my vocal. You'll see. I done lost my way. Got nothing to say. Been down this road before and I don't want to stay. Boom. Now it's sounding good. And essentially what I'm doing is the reason I do it like this is like you see all these plugins. I obviously could take all of these and just have them on the track. But the reason I don't do it is because... I have so many vocal layers that are all going to have the exact same effects. I don't want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine or 10 plugins to be on every single track. Cause if you look at it, I've got one, two, three, four, I have five vocal tracks. And if I have nine plugins on five vocal tracks, that's technically 45 plugins. So instead, see how it says bus four. Well, guess what? All my vocal layers, I don't, let me show you how they all sound together. I don't lost my way, my way. This is without the bussing. That's with the bussing. So I can turn on that bus and all of those plugins get turned on on every single one of those tracks. Saves you a ton of time. When it comes to the actual bus of what's going on on the bus, I keep it really simple. I start with an EQ. I actually usually start with a preamp plugin. If you don't have it, again, this is optional. Um, and I'm, I'll break this down for you. Um, I'll break it down for you in the in 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 the DAW. But 
preamp, which is optional, then an EQ to clean it up, a compression, a, a dual compression, de-esser, which is going to soften the S's and P's, a little bit of saturation, some special effects, final EQ to clean it up, and then save your preset later. Oops. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So the first one was the preamp plugin. I use this one called Sheps 73 by Waves. I done lost my way. Let me turn this on right here. I done lost my way. Got nothing to say. Then I'll EQ. Cleans it up. Compression. I don't want to stay. I done lost my way. Another compressor. De-esser to soften the S's and P's. I done lost my way. Got nothing to say. Been down as then some saturation. That just basically means something to warm it up. Maybe it's distortion, um, something like that. Maybe it could be a chorus or a modulation effect. I love this one. It's called Magma BB Tubes by Waves. I done lost my way. Got nothing to say. Been down I have another special effects. It's called Puig Tech. I done lost my way, got nothing to say. Then I use Fresh Air by Slate. This is free. This is just adds a lot more crispiness. I done lost my way, got nothing to say. Been down this road before, and I don't want to stay. Then I'll do one final EQ to go chop up, clean up anything else that was not sounding good. I done lost my way, got nothing to say. Been down this road before, and, and essentially that's the vocal mixing. Then I'll save my preset for later. So right here, all this stuff is here. I can click settings. I can go to save channel strip setting as, and then save it for later. So what's really great about that is I'm working on an album called Views from the Sunset, VFTS. So when I go mix all 10 or 11 of my songs, I'm gonna, use the, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the exact same VFTS vocals for every single song. It's just gonna make mixing the entire song, the entire album better, and it's gonna have that cohesion. All right, so... The, so we just went over the top-down mixing. Then we looked at vocal mixing. The last part of mixing is called mix bus compression. Basically what you're doing there is I'm just going to go ahead and copy this over to our handy dandy whiteboard that we have here and we're gonna there we go that's better all right cool very unedited video am i right yeah this is like i'm just trying to make this all there we go so mix bus compression means putting plugins on all the tracks, um, put, putting plugins on the track that affects the entire song, which is called the stereo out or the master. I'm basically just going to do EQ, compression, and then I'm going to do like a final EQ, um, and I'm going to use a little bit of AI for that. So let me show you exactly what I did. So going to the stereo out track is right here. Let me turn everything off, and then I'll show you what the differences are. Sounds good, but I'm gonna turn on my mix bus compression. Louder, cleaner. Before, super dope, right? Now, one thing I want to show you, kind of going back to our original part, which is the goal. Negative 9 to negative 10 LUFS. Let me show you. If you take a look at the stereo out track and you look at the actual output gain, look where it's at. I done lost my way. Got nothing to say. Been down this road before. And I don't want to stay. I done lost my way. Got nothing to say. Been down this road before. And I don't want to stay. I done lost my way. It's, it's almost clipping. But if we go grab a metering plugin, a metering plugin is anything to measure, and you look at short term, watch where we're at. I done lost my way, got nothing to say. Been down this road before, and I don't wanna stay. I done lost my Actually, way. we could turn it up got more, and I'm going to. Been down this road before, and I don't wanna stay. I done lost my way, got nothing 
turn up my vocals a little. Turn up the bass. And then we're going to turn up. It's not bad. That's pretty good that I was able to do that. Solid. Even negative 11, negative 10, that's not bad. And essentially now when I'm done mixing, and you could see it was it was clipping right there, right? But you can see that as I'm mixing, it, it everything sounds clean. There's nothing clipping. Like I'm not hearing clipping. I'm not hearing anything bad going on. But the song's loud. So when I'm finally done mixing it and I go into my mastering phase, my song is going to sound that much louder. And so that's really, you know, the goal of all of this today, you know, I, I, I obviously there's a ton of, um, there's a ton of stuff on the internet, right? There's a ton of stuff on the internet out there that's teaching you how to mix that can get really, really, really technical. And I've gone through those videos. In fact, I have a ton of videos like that on my YouTube channel if you want to go check those out. But in this, I just wanted to give you the overall strategy framework and explain to you from the top down how I go about mixing and what I do to teach my clients. So what I do is I teach recording artists how to become their own music producers in just 90 days through my Rapid Fire Music Academy. And like, if you want to learn more about that, there's really two things you can do. Number one, um, you can click the link in the description, go watch the main video pinned to my channel that really walks through what the academy looks like. Or if you've already been consuming my content for a long time and you feel like you're pretty much ready to go, you can actually book a call to speak with me or my team and discuss enrolling you in Rapid Fire Music Academy. Either way, I hope that I've given you some value and I've hoping I, I hope I've been able to serve and support you in your music goals. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.